Hi, my name is Mike Scott, Industrial Product Manager for the Modal Shop, and in today's video I'll be calibrating a Proof-Technic Current Line Drive Accelerometer model VIB 6.102R with our portable vibration calibrator and our brand new model 9100-PS07-PT signal conditioner. These Proof-Technic accelerometers are unique in the industry because their output is in AC current rather than AC voltage. The Proof-Technic Vibe 6.102R has a sensitivity of 1 microamp per meter per second squared or 9.8 microamps per G of acceleration. Most Proof-Technic current line drive accelerometers feature a TNC connector. The model 9100 PS07PT signal conditioner has a TNC female input and is supplied with a TNC male to male cable making it a turnkey solution. Let's start the test. The Vibe 6.102R is a bonded accelerometer. We have bonded it to a mounting plate that screws onto the calibrator. Use the supplied wrench to secure the shaker's armature before tightening the sensor under test. When connecting to the accelerometer, Push the TNC down so the connector is seated, then turn the collar to tighten. Pushing down on the shaker will not harm the device. Connect the other end of the TNC cable to the 9100 PSO7 PT. Connect the output of the 9100 PSO7 PT to the test sensor input of the calibrator using the supplied BNC to BNC cable. Finally, connect the 9100 PS07PT's USB to the USB port on the calibrator to power the signal conditioner. Within the Tools menu of the Portable Vibration Calibrator, set the resistance value to the calibrated resistance provided on the label of the 9100 PS07PT. The Portable Vibration Calibrator will retain this value in memory until it is changed. The value only needs to be entered once, and the shaker will remember this value even if it suffers a dead battery. Within the Calibration Settings menu, change the sensor type to Mod Cur. Mod Cur stands for Modulated Current and is used for AC current output sensors. The calibrator has been programmed to perform a step sign frequency response sweep calibration with pass-fail notification after each test point. The first test point is at 159 Hz, 10 meters per second squared RMS. Per the accelerometer's specification, the sensitivity must be within 3% of 1 microamp per meter per second squared. And you can see we fail because we're exactly 3% high with a sensitivity of 1.03 microamps per meter per second squared at this uh, frequency, which is the reference frequency for the accelerometer. We will now perform a frequency response sweep calibration of the accelerometer per ISO 16063 part 21 starting at 10 Hertz and from now on all test points must remain within 5% of the sensitivity at 159 Hertz until we reach 8 kilohertz high frequency response. And you can see when I click the file button, it tells me that my 10 hertz calibration point passes. Now at 30 hertz, and again 10 meters per second squared RMS, we pass one more time. At 50 hertz, we wait for the amplitude to settle on 10 meters per second squared RMS. And then once again, the screen tells us that we pass uh, calibration at that test point. Our sensitivity is pretty consistent now at 1.03 microamps per meter per second squared, so this accelerometer is not performing badly. Um, it was just out of tolerance at the reference frequency and very close to passing. Um, at 1000 hertz, again, we pass calibration, and at this point, I'm just looking at the pass-fail screen at the very top right for that pass notification or fail notification as I move from point to point, and I'm waiting for the amplitude to settle on 10 meters per second squared RMS. In the interest of brevity, we'll stop at 4,000 hertz, although the calibrator can go to 10,000 hertz, and save the record to the memory of the calibrator. 
Once we save it, a new test begins. The accelerometer's calibration certificate is quickly made by importing the calibration data from memory using the supplied USB flash memory drive and Microsoft Excel calibration workbook. No other software is required besides Microsoft Excel. You can see on our calibration certificate that sensitivity at 159 hertz was 1.03 microamps per meter per second squared at a test level of 10 uh, meters per second squared RMS. In the data table, you can see that the maximum percentage deviation was 3.6 percent at 8,000 hertz. So all of those data points pass calibration at specifically at 159 hertz. We're 3 percent off from the specified value of 1 microamp per meter per second squared. So I have to mark this calibration as out of tolerance at 159 hertz. The date and time is automatically imported into the bottom right of the calibration certificate. In this video, I programmed a stepped sign calibration with pass-fail tolerances before testing the Proof-Technic accelerometer, rather than using the shaker manually. Um, to learn more about programming repetitive tests into the shaker, please watch our CalRoute programming video. I also created the accelerometer's calibration certificate without specifically showing how the calibration data is imported into the supplied Microsoft Excel workbook. There are numerous videos on our website that show how this is done. I suggest the Bentley Nevada Velometer 190501, that's a Velometer CT calibration video. It takes you step by step through importing the calibration data and creating a frequency response certificate in just three clicks of the mouse. I hope you enjoyed this video showcasing our portable vibration calibrator and our turnkey Proof-Technic CLD accelerometer calibration signal conditioner. We have over 20 videos on our website showing how to calibrate everything from Bentley Nevada sensors to proximity probes to Emerson vibration analyzers. Please check out our video vault to watch more instructional videos or find us on YouTube by searching for Modal Shop. Thank you for watching.